Sunny and beautiful Chicago. Looking around the peaceful streets of the Windy City, you'd never guess that only 10 years ago, this was the very place where Optimus Prime saved mankind from the destructive wiles of the evil Decepticons. <laughs> it has been zero days since I last spoke about the Angry Robot movies. Of the franchise, Transformers 1 is by far the least punishing to watch. However, everything bad about the later installments is present here, just in an embryonic state. It's like over time they took this same movie and kept running it through filters until it became Transformers movies have three parts. Metal men attack one another, talented actors say awful lines about it, and someone from the army says go, go, go. And while the 2007 movie is the most watchable, it's still weirdly proportioned and loud and frequently uncomfortable. It's like me when I was 13. If you search within Transformers, you can find a traditional hero's journey. Shia LaBeouf leaves his house, hears about a secret, and then almost dies but doesn't. Does he learn a lesson? Yes, he learns that sometimes there are huge shifts and noises. But that's not all this movie has to offer. Transformers actually has three storylines. One with Shia and Megan, one with army guys, and one with John Voight and the Hacker Gang. Using his filmmaking technique, Michael Bay begins on the B story so the movie can start with things blowing up. This is called a hook, which is short for hey, look. In the last few years, this has also become a standard practice with movie trailers. You know how when you watch a trailer online, it starts with like a micro trailer for the trailer? In this opening scene, we meet some soldiers who have families and they miss their families. They're in Qatar, which is in the Middle East, if you must know. And they say, what are you gonna do when you get home? I'm gonna see my wife and baby. How about you? Amen. I too will see my wife. Amen. Amen. What about you, Ramirez? I'm going to see me mama. Speak English, you're a proud son of Washington! The main soldier is Josh Dumel, and he loves to look at pictures of chips all day. Ah, <laughs> my lays! Lays. Oh a my little goodness. joy every battle. Then an attack helicopter becomes an attack person and shoots at them, and he releases a bug from his chest. Also, this man is there. Turns out he's in several of these movies, just standing and frowning. Anyway, boom pow wow, in the A story we meet Sam Witwicky, who is a good character because he wants things. He wants to kiss a pretty lady, he wants his dog to become strong and powerful, and he wants his car to stop deploying its secret smokescreen. Sam is a student, along with other children who seem to be just any age. In the back you have Megan Fox and a 24 year old man, and in the front you have an electric version of Beans from Even Stevens. Sam is a little self-centered and ambitious, and he has a silly blonde friend, but the very moment the plot gets going, this friend disappears forever. This exact dynamic recurs with Mark Wahlberg and T.J. Miller in Transformers 4, except T.J. Miller is reduced to a smoking pillar of ash and nobody even takes a moment to mourn him. Shoutouts to Michael Bay for always kicking it up a notch. In the C story, John Voight corrals some hackers to decode the evil robot noise. And the only real lead we have so far is this sound. Baba boo. The stakes here are that the Decepticons are stealing their files, their secret files. Whoever did this finally managed to infiltrate our defense network, which is what they tried to do in Qatar, only this time it worked. This plot is all just military explaining men. <laughs> Meanwhile, Sam gets a car, and then he dazzles Megan with his material wealth, but then it turns out that his car has a body, and feelings, and perhaps a soul. So now this boy and this alien are best friends. I miss that dynamic in movies. Now it's so rare that we get to see a kid sneaking some kind of creature through the house. Movies used to all the time be like, Keep him in my closet. He's called a Grom. Anyway. Then this Australian hacker lady takes the code on this Panasonic SD card. And she says, I know of only one man who can match my hacking skills. I met him when he was roaming the outback in search of a rogue kangaroo. I'm sorry, but what do you do? Maggie! Shut up, Grandma! There's the Grandma, please! Get down on the ground! Don't yell at the Grandma! Then Bumblebee beats up a cop, and then he sends up the boy signal, and all the boys come down. And Megan Fox tries to deliver this line without dying inside. What are you, like an alien or something? Optimus Prime uses his hell to tell Sam that he needs his grandpa's special glasses to find the cube, which made the Transformers. Except it didn't because some aliens made the Transformers, except maybe not because maybe it was Quintessa, but I think she was lying, but except I think they're made of Transformers. We're getting ahead of ourselves. They need these glasses. 
Except they don't because these agents take them directly to the cube. We're getting ahead of ourselves. Sam has to sneak around his house to find those glasses so they can go do the quest. This is a scene that you'll have in a movie, for sure. It's just a little strange that it's over 10 minutes long and over an hour in and includes a prolonged family discussion on the main character's sexual development. But anyway, Sam sneaks around and the robots sneak around and they're really very bad at it. Like their uh, key differentiator is their ability to disguise, but here they're just, just robots in the yard. There's guys all over the front yard. Men in the yard. Give me a sample and some isotope bleeding. John Turturro shows up to John Turterrorize the Witwicky family. He puts them into cars even though they don't want to go, but the robots take their roofs off and free them, which is a crime. This is such a felony what you're doing. This alerts the anti-crime helicopters, so they have to run away. Rather than become a car and blend in with cars, Optimus stays in man mode and hides under a bridge. As a result, the bad men capture Bumblebee. Optimus doesn't save him because There's no way to free Bumblebee without harming the humans. Which is funny because the suit guys take everyone to the Hoover Dam. This is where they're keeping many secret objects, like the cube and a frozen Megatron and the forbidden season of Seinfeld. Turns out that long, long ago, Megatron crash-landed in the Arctic Circle, and all of modern technology came from studying his parts and pieces. It's cool that the U.S. managed to keep this one robot a secret, while canonically, every relevant historical figure was keeping hundreds of other robots a secret. As for the cube, Megatron wants it to turn our machines into an evil army, Optimus wants it to rebuild his home planet, and humans wants it to turn phones into little guys. This guy is, and always has been, one of my favorite guys. I'm obsessed with that perfect tiny missile launcher. Anyway, this horrible guy defrosts Megatron. Hello. Josh Duhamel uses his tactical mind and says, Charlie Delta Foxtrot, let's take the cube and hide it in a densely populated metropolitan area. Good plan. Autobots, maximize collateral damage. So they go to the city, but the problem is the bad robots go also to the city too. On the way there, they kill Diesel 10 from Thomas and the Magic Railroad. They arrive in the city and for their first trick, they use a whole Furby truck to block a missile. And then they run around and they use spin moves and they use spin moves and he makes some angry sounds and she steals a car and this guy says Set the flare. No. Signal the chopper and set no, the flare. I can't do this. Listen to me, you're a soldier now. Sam runs around with the cube and it touches the ground which creates a Decepticon and Ah Wheel Monster and an Xbox Robot. And it also creates Cube Boy. You love me now. Give me that Cube Boy! Cube Boy sacrifices himself to kill Megatron for the first of several times, and Optimus takes all the credit. You left me no choice, brother. Shia and Megan make out on Bumblebee's hood, which is weird, but probably not as weird as driving him. Like if I knew my car had a secret face, every time I got in there I would be like, which part is the face? Then they dump that bot corpse into the sea. The Laurentian Abyss is seven miles below sea level, deepest place on our planet. It is literally common knowledge that that's not true. I know because I asked. Brody, what's the deepest point in the ocean? Mariana's Trench. Mariana's Trench. Mariana's Trench. Mariana's Trench. The Mariana's Trench. Please pull to the next window. The Mariana's Trench. Do you want to punt Bumblebee? No. Do you want to punt Bumblebee? No. Do you want to punt Bumblebee? Um, yeah. 